Okay, in this video, we're going to continue our discussion of mole conversions, but we're going to learn how to convert all the way down to atoms of a particular element within a compound, or how to calculate how many atoms in total we have in a quantity of uh, atoms or molecules. So in order to explain this concept, let's look at a quantity that's a little bit more familiar to us than the mole. Let's look at one dozen, and we know that one dozen is 12 anythings. So if I have 12 donuts, I know that I have, I have one dozen. I can say that I have one dozen donuts. So right here, I actually have uh, one dozen water molecules. And if I take a look at my atoms individually, I can count and figure out how many atoms of oxygen I have and how many atoms of hydrogen I have in these in these 12 in this one dozen water molecules so if I count up all of my uh, oxygens I notice that I have 12 oxygen atoms or one dozen oxygen atoms in one dozen water molecules and when I count up all of my hydrogens I notice that I have 24 hydrogen atoms or two dozen hydrogen atoms in my one dozen water molecules, which makes sense because in every water molecule, I have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So I'm going to have double the amount of hydrogens than oxygens in my, in whatever quantity of water molecules that I have. So let's see if this relationship holds true because what I did notice is my oxygen, since I only have one oxygen per water molecule, I have one dozen oxygens in my one dozen water molecules. My hydrogens, I have two dozen uh, hydrogen atoms in my one dozen water molecules. So I took this two and I multiplied it by the one. So let's see if that relationship is always the same to get us the number of individual hydrogens and oxygen atoms. So now I've doubled my quantity. So I actually have two dozen water molecules. And when I count up all of my individual oxygen atoms, I notice that I have 24 oxygen atoms or two dozen oxygen atoms. And then when I count up all of my hydrogens, I'm going to find that I actually have 48 hydrogen atoms or four dozen hydrogen atoms which is exactly what I noticed when I had one dozen. So I took this two and I multiplied it by my hydrogen. So two times my H2 is four. So I should have four dozen hydrogens because every water molecule has two hydrogens. And then my two, I know there's a subscript one here, my two times one, I'm gonna have two dozen oxygen, uh, oxygen atoms. I can also calculate my total number of atoms altogether if I have uh, in two dozen water molecules. So every water molecule actually has three atoms. So if I have three atoms in each of my water molecules, and I have two dozen wa water molecules, two times three is six, I have six dozen atoms in my two dozen water molecules. So I have 72 atoms total. And if I counted all of these up, I would notice that it, indeed I do have 72 atoms total, 48 hydrogen and 24 oxygen, or six dozen atoms total, two dozen oxygen and four dozen hydrogen. Well, let's expand this one more time and see if we can uh, confirm this relationship. Okay, so now I've increased it to actually one, two, three, four, five, six dozen water molecules. So if I have six dozen water molecules, when I count up all of my oxygens, I should notice that I have six 
dozen oxygen atoms, which is the same as 72 individual oxygen atoms. And since I have two hydrogens in every one of these single water molecules, I'm going to have 12 dozen hydrogen atoms, which is 144 individual hydrogen atoms. And since I have six dozen water molecules and each of those water molecules has three atoms, three times six gives me 18. So I have 18 dozen uh, atoms total or 216 total atoms. So oxygens and hydrogens. So now that we've taken a look at this in terms of dozen, let's see if the same concept applies when we're working with moles, which is what we're going to work with um, much more in chemistry. Okay, so let's say we had one mole of water. And I know that if I have one mole of water, and I want to figure out how many uh, molecules of water that is, I have to use my conversion factor of one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And when I do my math, 1 times 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd, my moles will cancel and I'm left with 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Well now I know that every one molecule of water contains two atoms of hydrogen. So this is just another conversion factor that I can use. One molecule of water equals two atoms of hydrogen, where I have two atoms of hydrogen in every one molecule of water. So when I take 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 2, I get 1.20 times 10 to the 24th, and my molecules cancel atoms of hydrogen. Well, I want to know how many moles of hydrogen that is to see if it's the same relationship as we notice with our dozen water molecules. So if I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen, I know that's the same as one mole of hydrogen. And I know from up here that my 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, or I'm sorry, my 1.2 times 10 to the 24th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and I will get two moles of hydrogen because my atoms cancel. So now that we've observed the relationship, we can take some shortcuts. If I have three moles of water, I know that I have six moles of hydrogen because I take two times three equals six. And if I have three moles of, of water, I know that I have three moles of oxygen. And if I have three moles of water, I have three times three because I have three total atoms in one molecule of water, I'm going to have three total moles of atoms. Down here, if I have 15 moles of water, I'm going to have 30 moles of hydrogen because 15 times two is 30. And I'm going to have 15 moles of oxygen and 45 moles of atoms total. That T is for total atoms. 
because 15 times 3 is 45, and I have three atoms in every one molecule of water. Okay, so let's take a look at a practical example. Example number one asks, how many atoms of hydrogen are in 78.5 grams of glucose? Well, start with what I'm given, 75.8 grams of glucose, which is C6H12O6. And in order to be able to use that trick that we've just learned, I need to figure out how many moles are in 78.5 grams of glucose. So I find my molar mass of glucose and I find it to be 116 grams are in one mole of glucose. So when I do my math, I get 0 0.68 moles of glucose are in 78.5 grams. Well, if I have 0 0.68 moles of glucose, I can do another conversion factor, and I know that one mole of glucose, C6H12O6, has 12 moles of hydrogen. So 0 0.68 times 12 and I get 8.1 moles of hydrogen. But it didn't ask me how many moles, it asked me how many atoms. So I have to take this one more step. And if I had enough room on my screen, I would do this in one long conversion factor. So 8.1 moles of hydrogen, and I have to go from moles to individual atoms, so one mole of hydrogen is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. So 8.1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and I get approximately 4.9 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen in 78.5 grams of glucose. So example number two is going to examine how to find total atoms because it asks how many total atoms are in 4.7 moles of C3H8. So always start with what you're given. So we have 4.7 moles of C3H8. Eight. And I'm already in moles, so to use our little trick um, that we've been looking at through this entire video, I don't have to do any conversions because it's already in moles. So if I have one mole of C3H8, I know that I have 11 total moles of atoms because every molecule of C3H8 has 11 atoms. So when I do my math, my 4.7 times 11, I get 51.7 moles of atoms in 4.7 moles of C3H8. But they want total atoms, not just moles of atoms. So I gotta take it one more step. So if I have 51.7 moles of atoms, if I do my conversion factor using Avogadro's number, I know that in every one mole, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So even though this is this can be one mole of atoms, so my mole cancels and 51.7 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals 3.11 times 10 to the 25th total atoms or atoms total. So if I have 4.7 moles of C3H8, 
I have 3.11 times 10 to the 25th total atoms. And we'll be doing some more practice with this in class, so bring any questions you have for when we go over it.